pretty much like um, leading the team. Um, I mean, obviously, there's many different disciplines in art department, and you know, everyone needs to be support has a right support and uh, good guidance. So my job is more like you know, in, in a way, it's like mentor, like a uncle, big brother, um, making sure like every team member has a good support so they can like do their the best yeah and and also you know it's like um designing like art stuff for the game from conceptual stuff to like actual finishing you know i i also work with the team to make sure like everyone has a communication goes well between the different department too yeah so there's, there's a lot of, it's fun yeah Cool. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great description. Obviously, you know, as someone who is helping to lead a team, you, you get to touch a lot of different aspects of what the team is doing and, and helping kind of figure out, um, you know, a lot of the directional stuff. So yeah. let me go ahead and make sure I've moved my mic chat. Let me know if this sounds a little bit better. Um, I will go ahead and just give it a minute there. And yeah, as you can see, Cecil is working on a piece. Um, part of this Part of this is that uh, you get to watch him draw an original piece of sky art, which is great. Um, what what are you drawing, by the way, Cecil? <laughs> yeah, so you know, I was thinking about this, and uh, like lately, I, I had this image of uh, um, one of the elder, right? Um, actually, like he's big as like King Kong, and he's walking across the um, world, and then the sky kids are flying around them. So part of it is like, you know, I, I, I love this art piece done by N.C. Wyatt. He's an American illustrator. Actually, this was painted in 1923. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, it's one of my favorite artwork. And definitely he, he was dreaming. <laughs> and the fact that someone actually had a vision of dream something and it really touched my heart. And, and you know, I'm, I'm sure if he's still alive, he'd probably like either, either work on the video game, like something like Sky. <laughs> so, <laughs> so taking that as inspiration and uh, I wanted to sketch something like that, you know. Um, and then actually I took some time and laid out some like kind of rough line work first because I didn't want to like spend too much time figuring things out right now. So I had some underdrawing that I'm pretty much like technically tracing over right now but I think um, this is something that also I want to share with the people who want to learn how to draw and stuff so like instead of jumping into like sketching something hoping that you can get uh, everything correctly I think part of it is like you have to like build on like like composition first and then start adding details on top of it yeah yeah, I, uh, you know, in my head canon now, this is uh, the Kaiju Elder. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I actually watched that movie, uh, the Kaiju yeah. Godzilla, right? Yeah. Yep, it was uh, Godzilla versus Kong that just came up. So now we just need a second in the Elder, right? Um, cool. Yeah, so we'll we'll get to watch you continue to work on that um, okay. as the stream goes on. And otherwise, um, I'm going to jump into some questions. Uh, sure. Uh, these are ones we actually pulled from some of our Discord um, shepherds. So. They were kind enough to field some questions, so we'll just go through them one at a time here. Yeah. Um, so the first one is, how does the art team take an idea for a season and begin designing for it? it, it do you have a specific process for this as a team? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, basically, you know, the reason why we call this season, like, I think it's a season, right? So meaning, like, uh, each season is very distinct and different in the uh, in real world, right? So we want to plan out a season to be unique and different like each time and that probably starts with uh, figuring out the tone and the theme right like the type of mood and type of outcome or just overall like feeling of it um so that can be defined by emotional like description but also like kind of like the color palette too and then maybe the temperature of the place. Um, so, like getting going into pandemic, I, I think we 
did some uh, round round about uh, pitching ideas about new season uh, about a year ago, and then the team like pitched a bunch of very interesting ideas, and some of them is like still like kind of became a more like a foundation for uh, new season ideas. So we do start with some general direction like that, um, coming from creative director Junova Chen and uh, some of the leads. Sometimes the team actually pitches idea too. And from there, we start adding like a um, storyline of who are these uh, characters and um, what, are we, what are we trying to tell, right? Like what type of uh, like a narrative journey we want to put the player through. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, obviously this season um, has some very specific tones and emotions it's trying to hit in a, in uh -huh. a very, you know, um, specific color palette. So it's, it's really cool to hear from you. And I think... You know, if you're if you're someone watching this who's interested in art and, and you know you want to get more involved in this, I think definitely some great takeaways you'll be able to to grab from from this particular live stream. Yeah, um, and, and also that's the one side of things, and the second part of it is um, us trying to like figure out um, understand what community uh, wants. So that also contributes to the designing season. Um, so. It's like we have to look at it from all different angles, but um, we, we never struggle to find the, what what is going to be next season because there's so much thing we want to do. So we're probably never going to be running out of the ideas. Um, yeah, and, and you know, it's like we try to plan ahead, so it's, we, we're doing that now, so yeah. Exciting. Yeah, so um, when you were looking at Season of Assembly specifically, were there any specific sources that you you kind of drew from maybe from like out in the world or, or any ideas that kind of came to mind. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, just a second, please. Yeah. And while Cecil is looking at this, um, just want to let you all know if you have to go or if you can't make it for the entire stream, uh, we are going to try to later on upload this to our YouTube channel. Um, so you will be able to watch this VOD in its entirety um, later on after it's completed. But uh, welcome back, Cecil. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> So you were asking, um, uh, what, what were you asking? Yeah, so uh, for Season of Assembly, you know, kind of as you were talking about, you know, the process of, of kind of building that creative style for a right. season, once once you had that locked in, were there any, you know, sources or, or kind of inspiration oh, yeah. um, for the season? Yeah, um, because we wanted to um, revisit this, uh, like, sort of like a culture or, or like, the our childhood memory right like um going camping with friends and uh like joining boy scouts and things like that so um it, we all like kind of thought about our um childhood and um some of the movies that we actually took inspiration from or, or peter pan for example right like um peter pan was also sort of mm -hmm. help us to figure out the tone how Kids are naturally like want to, you know, very curious and love being outdoor and and also some of the movies like '80s movies like Goonies. So that that also kind of like brought up a couple times. Yeah. So that's good. I uh, I'm glad we're at a work from home setting because I could <laughs> do the truffle shuffle and I probably would have tried to have done it. So um, still, yeah, it's really cool to hear you know Goonies, um, you know, and, and kind of these other movies. You know, once you lock in that tone, that these are kind of things you think about. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So next question here. So for season of assembly, I guess the other side of the coin is: um, was there anything uniquely challenging about developing the kind of artistic tone for the season? Yeah, um, artistic tone for the season because um, we we want, we didn't want it to. Um, uh, create a new like area because um, we wanted to introduce new the system which is like the, the staging system um, thinking that it's like there's a lot to figure out so we wanted to sort of um, maintain the scope so the area that we looked at was the, the rain level so I think the rain level is is already 
uh, really nice. And the challenge was to uh, revisiting the area and um, making it into like the main area. Because coming out from the Season of Dreams, I think Season of Dreams was pretty ambitious level. And you no, know, I mean the season, and there was a lot of great visuals and like it's, it's pretty big setting. So we had to figure out like you know how do we um, continuing that. Um, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Obviously, every challenge or every season has its own unique challenges. Um, you know, you probably like get really excited about some of the stuff initially, and it's like, oh, how do we actually make that, or how do we actually convey that? So yeah, it's cool to hear. Uh, I'm gonna switch it up really quickly and ask you kind of a silly question. Um, this is from Harbin, um, one of our shepherds. Um, Cecil, are you a coffee or a tea person? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I'm both. <laughs> okay. I'm a, I'm I'm a light coffee drinker, but you know, since we went to remote work situation, um, I, I've been enjoying drinking coffee. But then I realized I'm drinking too much, so yep. <laughs> I, I I switched to tea lately. So I yeah, it's good good both. I uh, I agree with you. I also <laughs> realized that I started to drink too much coffee um, when I got something that was like a train to size once, and I was like, this is probably not good for me. Um, so I've tried to drink a little bit more of the kind of green tea lately. All right, back into the questions about Season of Assembly. Um, what was your favorite thing about working on Season of Assembly? Uh, Season of Assembly, the favorite thing about it was out of uh, all the season that we have done, I think it's the most something that I can relate it to because um, I'm an outdoor person and I'm – I love camping. I, I love hanging out with my friends out in the woods. So for me, it's like, ah, oh, this is great because like, I just want to be in that mood and in that it's setting. And I was, yeah. that's why I was kind of seeing that how final um, season will look like or feel. And it, it was like right on, right on the dot, meaning like it was very accurate that what I expected. And also seeing the treehouse coming alive, that was, I mean, you know, who doesn't like treehouse? For me, it was, I, I grew up in the city. So treehouse is like, I never seen treehouse. I never only seen in like Disney animation cartoons and stuff like that. And, and we ended up like making an awesome treehouse. So that was my favorite part. Yeah, the, the tree house is really like, you know, compared to some of the tree houses that I, I visited as a kid and yeah. helped to make, it was like our, our tree house in sky is pretty high production value, you know, you want to get it up. <laughs> but, uh, um, certainly, the, I've seen tree houses that were just like one plank mm. and then people just tried not to fall off. So um, I agree. I think the tree house is, is really one of the cooler things about the season. Um, so obviously, a lot of new props with Season of Assembly. Um, were there any specific props that you were really fond of, or do you have a favorite prop? I I, I was thinking about this, and I would say spotlight and the tree, uh, tent are the two yeah. favorite ones. Yeah, because you know I just love to be inside of this koji like tent. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, you know, it's like you know covers rain and all that gives provides you uh, the, the shelter. But spotlight is like that's that's kind of magical, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, that's gonna really. Um, I hope that the players find that it's fun to play with. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're in chat and you have a specific uh, you know favorite prop from the season, definitely let us know. Um, we want to see. I'm a I'm a big fan of the hammock. Um, you know, mostly because you can kind of like walk up to a bunch of people having a conversation or hanging out, and then you can just kind of drop your hammock and, and take a nap and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of just people watch, right, in Sky and watch other people run around. Uh, but I, I also just really love hammocks in real life. Um, you know, like you were saying, Cecil, tents are, are really cozy. Like, I always kind of get that Hawaiian vibe from a hammock. Like, I'm, I'm on the beach, and it's yeah. nice. Uh, um, let's see what uh, what chat's saying. We have Tiki Torch, Spotlight, Hammock. Um, so yeah, a bunch of a bunch of different props here. Um, players really enjoyed. Um, all right, let's go ahead and uh, get a little bit outside of season of assembly and just talk about um, you know more kind of general stuff here. Uh, what would you say is kind of your favorite thing about working on Sky? Uh, 
my favorite thing working on Sky is, I would say, is originality. Meaning, mm -hmm. uh, from the design of the game, or even how the character is designed, the, the feeling of it, it's, it's nothing like that out there, I don't think. So, it, yeah, it, it's, it's very special, right? It's like, um, I, think, I think that's my favorite um, part of the working on the sky. And also, like, how the team um, uh, grow and from the learning, the developing the game, and also, like, become more mature and getting better at it, right? So, it's, and then also the communication of the development is just, it's so good. There's a lot of discussions happening and which means it's just everyone is like wanted to um, come up with the best solution, I would say. Mm -hmm. And everyone's very curious. So it's, it's always question and answer. It's like, um, are we doing this? How are we going to do this? So even the art, um, down to like single prop, there's so many people are like involved and it's just like caring about it and just sharing their thoughts. So, yeah, but most, most, most important thing is, like I said, originality, like it's like, yeah, we're not copying anything. We're not following anyone's trend or we're, we're just doing our own thing. And it's, uh, I think that's also the uh, exciting part, right? Because uh, we have to figure a lot of things together as we go. Right? So. Yeah, there's there's definitely a real sense of collaboration in the studio, right? As you yeah. said, when you're when you're making something like this as a group, like everyone gets to share their ideas, mm -hmm. um, and it feels really good. So totally agree with you, and that's really cool to hear, you know, your perspective on what it's like to work at um, yeah. that game company. So we have a question here from the chat, Cecil. A very important question. Yes. Uh, What's in the bag that the elder is carrying? And is it also <laughs> giant sized or is it a collection of smaller things? <laughs> so that's something that I wanted to ask you guys to help me figure it out. So the story is like, he's, he's, he's moving, right? He just suddenly decided to leave, right? So everyone is like, why are you, where are you going, right? And why are you leaving us? <laughs> Or maybe he's just like a frozen statue or something, right? But the way I drew the, I think it feels like he's actually full on like like living uh, character. So he's like actually moving. So I was thinking putting like small stuff in the bag, but I couldn't really think about what could be, you know, it could be small like books or um, jars. But what do you guys think? Yeah, what are what are uh, what are y'all's theories in chat? What is <laughs> <laughs> what is the elder carrying and is it is it one big thing is it a collection of small things you know what is what is the story you want here for giant elder uh, we'll come back and check some of the questions um all right so you know obviously for someone watching this stream you know we, we've we've seen a lot of compliments in chat you know people are really enjoying this picture and, and it's clear that there are some folks who really appreciate and love art so you know for those who are aspiring to become artists and, and work on the kind of projects that you're working on cecil you know, what are some basic tips that you recommend for them to get started aside from practice? Because that's probably the obvious one. <laughs> yeah, so I think, um, like, if you want to get into games as an artist, I think, um, I think having a more uh, clear um, objective, right? For example, like, um, I mean that the objective can be your uh, motivation. Uh, when I when I started off my career, um, I was just so excited to knowing the fact that something I drew and something I sketch is actually gonna be uh, realized in three D and actually it's gonna like animated in the game, right? That was just such a amazing like I couldn't believe that was happening. Right? or that can happen, right? So for, for a long time, that, that's, that made me so happy, right? So I think uh, if you want to get into the games and without just saying, like, I want to work in the games, be more specific, like, um, when you play the game, like, something might inspire you, right? Like, 
uh, so cool. The character is so cool that um, I wish I can create something like that. And that will help you get into more uh, specific um, research, meaning who designed this character and how did he design the character. Um, and also the one thing that I want to uh, share um, anyone who wants to get into the, uh, the games, don't, don't be shy like reaching out and asking questions because um, when you're like young and students, I think it's perfectly fine for you to reach out to the professionals and ask the right questions, right? So never stop asking questions because, um, I mean, I don't mind, you know. I mean, when I get busy, I, I probably won't be able to get back to everyone, but I, I totally understand because that's, that's how it needs to be done and how it should start, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, people people doing teaching people who want to learn. So that's <laughs> awesome. Um, and it's it's always cool to hear from, from people, you know, who are kind of professionals in their in their discipline that they're willing to, to talk to people and teach them. So um, that's really cool to hear. Um, I guess the next question I would have for you is, you know, I, I feel like when I talk to creatives, they generally have like a specific time of day that they feel like most inspired or they kind of do their best work. Uh, do you have like a specific time of day or, or do you just like excellence every hour of the day? No, I lately like early in the morning because um, before everything really gets like busy and like there's a lot of meetings uh, happening. So typically it's early in the morning. But I think um, there's a lot of work that also can be done in, 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 your, in your brain, meaning um, it's not like you completely turn off, shut off your brain thinking about your uh, work, right? Uh, sometimes like, I, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to say image training, but it's more like you also like can design in your head, you know, as, as you, I mean, if you work for a long time. Um, so that's gonna help you when you actually go outside and do like other things not related to work, but you see something that inspires you, then that can really connect at, at the moment, right? So for me, it's like, I think the artists in general, like we have to accept the fact that we are, our, our, we are built differently, right? So you have to be very open to uh, information to come in all the time, right? That does, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> oh, for sure. I, yeah. you know, at a very amateur level, I like to, yeah. uh, I like to make pixel art. Um, and I have <laughs> kind of, you know, times where like I, I, uh, I actually picked up a book recently and, and that book gave me like a lot of inspiration of like things I wanted to try to make. Um, so that yeah. was like, rather than it being a specific time of day, it was more, um, you know, watching, watching this guy and what he made. And then I was like, that inspires me to try things. So I think, I think that's a really good call out. Um, yeah. you, when you're inspired as a, you know, by the things around you or the things you're looking at as opposed to specific times of the day. Yeah. And also like, um, you tend to, um, believe, start thinking like late in, at night, right? Well, especially when you're young, when everything's quiet, you know, you, you think that you can be more productive, but it's actually, um, it's better to do that early in the morning. I mean, if you're a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, was going to say, I'm, I'm starting to get to that age where, uh, you know, I'm productive probably, you know, until about seven at night that I'm tired. So <laughs> I usually do my best work in the mornings. Um, all right. So we actually we have some theories about what's in the, the elder's bag um, that I wanted to share. So let's see here. We have butterfly pots, beans, food, <laughs> jars to carry butterflies. Giant sandwich. I like that theory. I mean, he's a. <laughs> this, this looks like a big elder, so I would assume you know, big taste, big hunger for sandwiches. Um, carrying a bunch of small lanterns from vaults. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think I'll, I'll take the idea of butterfly jar because, you know, as you oh. can see, I didn't open up this part so much, so I can only put the props here, and I'm already running out of space. Um, I think the jar. Yeah, he's, oh, he's like stealing all the butterflies from the world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, share the butterflies. Come on, other people are going to need those butterflies. Yeah. Um, okay, so 
here's another kind of sillier question here, but you know, of all the of all the realms in Sky, yeah. you know, so if you could take a vacation in any one of them in real yeah. life, which would you choose? I definitely sanctuary. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't like white sand beach and uh, like you know what do you, what do you call it? Bookworm, right? Especially in the island, that the floating island, where the bookworm was. Yeah, that is just unreal. Like I, I, I like to visit floating island with the waterfall. That's that would be my dream. <laughs> that's a that's a good one. I would imagine that's probably a, a pretty popular choice. If you're if you're in chat now watching this live and you have a specific realm you would like to go on vacation on, uh, definitely. Yeah, let us know. and and also that uh, whole season of seasonal sanctuary was uh, designed because we wanted everyone in the uh, community, our fans, to um, have a place to hang out and relax from all this, you know, the, the craziness happening, right? And yeah. I think, yeah. I think we, I've, from, from my observation, I think it, 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 I think we achieve our goal because every time I visit the island, I, I, I get the feeling, I I'm, I'm feel like, oh, you know, it's like so, so peaceful, right? So. Yeah. I think as someone who, you know, uh, doesn't get enough rain in California, I might have to go forest. Um, forest kind of gives me the, the rainy, cold vibes that I personally like. I also, I have the umbrella, so I would, you know, I would be safe. <laughs> it rains um, too much. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um, all right, we've got some folks. Uh, we have someone saying Citadel. You know, I think, I think Citadel is a beautiful spot. Honestly, there are so many beautiful places in the game. I mean, you could we can vault and do some reading. Um, you know, catch up on the mysteries of the universe. Definitely a lot of great choices. Um, the Citadel, yeah, Assembly Treehouse, Daylight Prairie is great. I mean, that's a great spot for a hammock. Yeah. I think. Yeah, a lot of great choices there. Um, all right, let's see here. I think we had just looking at some other questions. What do you think about having pets in the future? This was a question. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and tackle this one. So. You know, we, we get pet requests a lot, and I think it's definitely we on the team. Uh, we are a team with a lot of pets. We actually have a, a pet channel yep. that we specifically share pictures of our pets on. So uh, pets are definitely, you know, something that are very near and dear to all of us working at the studio. Nothing to share at the moment, but we definitely hear you all that you would like the ability to have pets. Um, and I, we got some coloring going on here. Wow, chat's, <laughs> that's going crazy for the coloring, and I, I kind of am too. Um it's a shame that we're, we're kind of almost to the end of this because I think, you know, I think people are going to be curious to see what this looks like in its finished form. So maybe we can well, find a way to put this on social media. Or, yeah, I mean, I could I could keep going a little bit more. Is that is that okay? I mean, you guys... Yeah, we got time. Yeah. It's Friday. We got time. Uh, we'll look through and see if there are any other questions. Yeah, for the pad, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the one at a time, I mean, I wish we, we can have a... Um, more days and month in a year. <laughs> yeah, that's really what it comes down to, right? Like we we get so many cool ideas from players, you know, whether it's on social media, whether it's you know in the in game, whether it's through email or something. Like we get so many cool ideas, and and to Cecil's point, right? There's only so many so many days in the year. Um, yeah, so there's we, only four seasons, but I mean, without regardless of season, I think the pad idea is great because. Um, yeah, I mean, like... Who doesn't you, love pets? <laughs> and, yeah, also pets are, you know, just, just naturally great companion, right? And our game is, like, you know, it's all about that. So. Yeah, so, you know, again, uh, definitely something in the future. I think we talk a lot about pets in the, in the studio, mostly about our own pets, but, you know, <laughs> I'm sure in the future... You know, we'll, we'll have more conversations about that and a whole bunch of other ideas. Yeah. Let's see, a uh, question from uh, Lull Ghosted. <laughs> Can we expect more TG street, TGC streams on the future uh, or in the near future? Yeah, so I think, you know, if you may have noticed, um, we've started doing kind of more developer updates. This is our first attempt at a stream in, in kind of the work from home setting. So I think, like, we definitely want to have more of kind of this video stuff where we talk directly to you and, and have the opportunity to hear from you directly. Yeah. So that's definitely something we want to do more in the future. Um, I think, you know, it's it's kind of finding the the time and getting everyone's schedules to line up. And you know, right now, 
while I'm sure Cecil is really enjoying painting this figure, um, you know, it's definitely something that's potentially pulling away from other things he could be working <laughs> on. So, um, just a matter of kind of balancing everyone's time, but it's definitely something we're excited to do. So please watch for more in the future and, and hopefully a little more organized than, <laughs> than this one has been. This was really kind of the test to see if we could pull it off in a, a work from home setting. Um, let's see if there were any other questions. Yeah, always, Sam, and we're always happy to address that kind of stuff. You know, definitely no promises, and we're not here to announce anything. But, you know, we're we're happy to, to answer questions and at least give our perspectives as, as individuals at the studio, maybe not on, on behalf of the studio directly. Um, let's see, I'm going to look for some more questions. Do you have any, any other hot art tips for uh, aspiring artists? See, so you would want to share since we have a little more time? Art tips? Yeah. Um, okay, so I think this is almost like uh, my like like um, uh, something that I personally like learn over many many years, um, which is um, drawing is so important um, because you know digital digital tools kind of allow you to quickly go back and forth between painting and drawings, right, nowadays. And I notice a lot of people are especially using a lot of um, uh, digital uh, software, like um, Procreate, uh, things like that. But in the end, you know, I think draw as much as you can. Like, it doesn't matter what you draw. Um, it's just, that's gonna, like, define you as a more, like, strong artist. And it it becomes foundation of everything. Like painting is pretty pretty, pretty much like a drawing too. Uh, if you really analyze how the painting painting works, um, even sky, um, it, entire game is built in very minimalistic art style. But the core of that uh, design is all done in drawings. And it, it, we're working on the art book, but the art book is gonna show like what how much work has gone into right um so yeah what, what i can tell you is uh, just just enjoy drawings and um just, just do, do any drawings as possible <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> yep. what i can say no it's, it's true I, I definitely think even you know as i mentioned earlier i've mostly been doing um kind of pixel art stuff lately but like drawing on the side with just a traditional like pencil and paper um, you learn a lot about how things are supposed to look, like what's like the composition yeah. of your subjects. So definitely agree on, on the drawing. If you're into art in general, drawing is just a good place to start just to, to learn a little bit more, um, even yeah. if you don't maybe and, end up going that route. And also, um, we tend to uh, like think about drawing, uh, sketching something, com uh, coming up with a design as a more important part of creativity, but... Uh, if you actually like draw a lot from actual real life, um, not only it's gonna help you um, like not think about what to draw, but it, you basically develop the, the skills to uh, filter the information, and actually edit the information, right? So that's also the, the lot of practice that we all need to do, which is like actually draw from life. Meaning it could be anything, right? Like it could be plants outside. It could be just people sitting in the coffee shop, no, that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool insight. Uh, we had another question here. Uh, do you set, Cecil and Robert also play Sky? How do you feel to meet the fans there as TGC does? So uh, definitely play. Play a lot of Sky, actually. Myself and my team, we set aside a specific time every Monday month to kind of play the mm -hmm. play the game together just as a group. Um, you know, I it's always awesome. But working in community, one of the coolest things is that I get to interact with fans. You know, um, you're all you're all's passion for the game and, and for the world. Um, definitely um, is something that that really feels great to us and, and kind of always inspires us to do better. You know, I'm sure. Cecil, you know, speaking from the art perspective, like hearing the responses to to the art, you know, Cecil's team makes, you know, is definitely something that's uh, very energizing. Uh, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, we're gonna wrap it up in a, a couple of minutes here, so okay. we will end up uh, putting out, I would imagine, the finished piece on social media. So yeah. we'll have to figure out if that's gonna live on, you know, which channel it's gonna live on, or if it's gonna be 
something from um, Cecil's social media. So we'll figure all that out. But did want to thank you all for, for coming out and joining us as we were kind of, again, testing this live stream from home thing. Um, it seemed like you all had a great time, which makes us super happy. And we'll, we'll definitely be looking to do more of these in the future. Uh, but in general, I would say watch for kind of more video content for us as we try to find ways to, to communicate with you all outside of just blogs and, and kind of social media. So Cecil, is there anything you wanted to say before we close out the stream? Uh, no, I just want to tell you um, thanks for watching and you know also thank thank you so much for playing. Um, yeah, we really appreciate uh, all the feedback and yeah, we, we love our community, you know, we're, we're like a big family. <laughs> <laughs> a big family of giant elders. <laughs> that was, was stealing all the butterflies from the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to also a special shout out thing to our mod team. So thank you to Tethic and Stellify uh, so much for, for moderating this and, you know, helping to, to surface us some of the questions that we can answer. But yeah, for now, I think that's going to do it for us. So uh, thank you so much. And we will go ahead and end the stream here. Okay. Thank you. Bye.